Have you heard of the snake diet? Well, in this video, we're going to go over what the snake diet is, how you can do it, and how it compares with the ketogenic diet. <laughs> The snake diet is not labeled as an actual diet, rather a lifestyle that is made around prolonged or extended fasting. The founder believes, and I quote, that humans historically endured periods of famine and that the human body can actually sustain itself on one meal every few days. Thus the name, the snake diet. Snakes are believed to have one high protein meal and then they can go from 22 to a lot more than 22 hours without ever eating again. This diet was invented by Cole Robinson that a lot of times comes a little rough on his channels. Thus, a lot of people have a difficult time following the videos. But basically, if you sit and listen to what he says, he's basically just easing you into a fasting protocol. So let's break it down and see exactly what the snake diet is. But who am I anyway? Well, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Talita from Shrinking with Keto. And throughout my ketogenic journey, I have lost over 190 pounds and reversed my type 2 diabetes. Now, throughout this journey, I have helped and coached plenty of people reach their goal and I hope to do the same for you. The diet involves a 48-hour initial fast. Yes, there's really no easing into this. The beginner-beginner stage starts with 48 hours, or as Mr. Robinson claims, as long as you can push it to. During that period, you have to supplement yourself with what he calls the snake juice, which in effect is an electrolyte supplement. After this period of fasting, there is a feeding window of only one to two hours where you literally have to sit and eat and feast, and then go back into your next fast. Robinson claims that once you have reached this goal, your weight goal, then you keep doing this cycling in and out of these prolonged fasts between 24 and 48 hours. Robinson set specific rules, so let's go and see some of them. First of all, let's start by how you make the snake juice. Now, the snake juice can either be bought off of Robinson's website or it can be made at home. You will need eight cups of water, half a teaspoon of Himalayan sea salt, one teaspoon of salt-free potassium chloride, and half a teaspoon of food-grade Epsom salts. Robinson goes a bit more extreme when it comes to the calorie count, claiming that a newcomer to this snake diet has no more than 3,500 calories to consume a week. Once the goal weight has been reached, Robinson recommends that an active woman moves her calories from 3,500 to 8,500 a week, but distributed in only five meals a week. Whereas if you're an active man, he takes your calories all the way up to 20,000 calories a week, but distributed in only three meals. Now let's move on to the phases of the snake diet. But first, let me interrupt you for a second. If this is the first time you're seeing this pretty face, let's make sure it's not the last. So please go ahead and subscribe to my channel and ring that bell icon so that YouTube can let you know every time I have a new video for you. And please feel free to ask me anything you want down in the comment section below and I will try my best to answer every single one of your questions. Back to phase one. The main goal in phase one for the newcomers of this diet is to reach and maintain a state of ketosis, probably the only first common point of the snake diet and the ketogenic diet. As I mentioned earlier, the initial fast should be at least 48 hours and should be heavily supplemented with the snake juice that we previously mentioned and apple cider vinegar. This is then interrupted with an eating window of one to two hours, though he does not specify as to exactly what you eat during this eating window. Right after your eating window, you jump into a longer 72-hour fast before you get your next break to eat. The goal here, and I quote, is to detoxify your liver. This phase compared to ketosis is similar, but also very different. You see, you do reach a level of ketosis by fasting for so long because your body has to produce ketones in order to sustain you, in order to give you energy. But since he doesn't specify exactly what you should eat, it's very easy if you have a high carb meal during that one hour eating window that it can throw you right out of ketosis again, making your 72 hour fast 
harder to sustain. In this case, if you do want to put a ketogenic diet within your one or two hour eating window, that could help maintain you satiated so you can ease through your next 72 hour fast. Let's shift over to phase two of the snake diet. During phase two, you now go in and out of prolonged fasts from 48 hours being the shortest all the way to 92 hours. And in this case, Robinson says, if you can go further, go further. These fasts are broken up by only single meals. Now you are meant to stay in phase two until you have reached your desired goal. No matter how long it takes, you need to stay in phase two and then we move on to phase three. Now, if you have gotten any value out of this video, I will kindly ask you to press the thumbs up button as this helps YouTube take this content and push it out to more people that need it, just like you. Phase three, the maintenance phase. It involves fasting for 24 to 48 hours. You will see that in phase three, the fasting time period has gone down to 24 hours. Again, these fasts are broken up only with single meals. During this phase, Robinson insists that you start listening to your body's hunger cues. The bottom line is that the snake diet is basically a diet based on extended fasting, putting your body in ketosis, and if you're not careful what you eat, out of ketosis and back in ketosis again. Robinson promotes metabolic flexibility through this diet, and he also is very big on not committing a metabolic suicide, meaning not burning out your metabolism. That's why he does want you to have those meals to break your fast. Is it sustainable? Well, this all depends on the strength of your character. Extended fasting has shown to have plenty of benefits. Don't forget that we can reach maximum autophagy with 72 hours. So if you were to fast for 72 hours, have one meal, fast again for 72 hours, then you would promote weight loss, you would promote metabolic flexibility. Robinson claims to also reverse type two diabetes through the snake diet, and you would definitely be reaping the benefits of autophagy. So in my opinion, is the snake diet good or bad? I think the snake diet is an extended fast that could be implemented, but only once you're fat adapted, only once you're keto adapted. What I would suggest is that you start on a ketogenic diet, don't count your calories, get fat adapted, let the natural hunger you have slow down because you will be satiated for much longer with fat. Start off with a 24 hour fast, see how your body feels, push it to a 48 hour fast, and then if you feel that you can do it, go for the snake. So there you have it, what the snake diet is and how you can implement it in your lifestyle. And as always, chin up, or you know, the crown slips.